Hey parents, uh, I wanna talk to you about something that we all face as parents. And that is the challenge of parenting when you're exhausted. So one of my favorite stories of our kids growing up uh, happened one day when I happened to be at work and my wife Amy was at home. Hannah was younger, she was in school though, but Jake was just a toddler and uh, we didn't have Leah yet, but Jake's just this little toddler boy. Amy got him settled, she was kind of going through a daily routine and there was this window she thought she had where she could sneak in a quick shower. So she got Jake all settled, hopped into a shower, and you know as parents, like that's like 15 minutes of solitude, no kids. Well, she paid for it because when she got out of the shower, uh, she went and found Jake and he wasn't where she left him, of course, he's a toddler boy. What he had done when she was in the shower was he, he somehow climbed into our cupboard and he managed to reach up and grab a container of Hershey's chocolate syrup. Apparently he carried this with him all over the house and Amy knew this because he didn't carry it upright with the top on. It was turned upside down and wherever Jake went through the house, it left a thin dark brown line of chocolate just tracing his path all through the living room, through the kitchen, all around the house, up the stairs. She could see everywhere he had been. At some point, Jake realized what a mess he was making and he, and he managed to get chocolate syrup all over his PJs. He was still in his pajamas. He thought, well, I better clean this up. So he went into the bathroom and he grabbed tissues and toilet paper and tried to wipe himself off, get this chocolate evidence off of him. But every time he did that, the, the tissue paper stuck to the chocolate on his PJs. So by the time Amy found him, uh, he had tarred and feathered himself and the house was a mess. So first of all, I want to acknowledge a couple things as parents. Number one, parenting is exhausting. Kids are exhausting. They are. And it doesn't matter what age they are. They have the ability to be exhausting at any age. And no matter what age our kids are, they require a lot of time, caring, affection, teaching, discipline, playing, encouraging, love, and did I mention time? And that can be exhausting as a parent. So I just want to acknowledge that, that, that parenting does take time and it can be exhausting. And second, you're not alone. All parents are gonna face times when you feel exhausted. So I just want to encourage you to take any feelings of guilt that you might have for feeling exhausted as a parent and just set that aside. Everybody experiences that. Uh, if you're a parent, you can't avoid it. And feeling exhausted doesn't mean you're a bad parent. It just means you're a parent. And so I don't want to talk today about ways to try to avoid exhaustion. It's going to happen. You know, obviously there's a lot of things that we can do to make sure that we're, we're getting filled up, that we're doing things that are keeping us healthy. At some point or another, you're going to feel exhausted. So the question today is how do I parent when I'm feeling exhausted? So I want to give you two things to consider. The, the first thing is think big picture. So back to our story with Jake, when he tarred and feathered himself and he left this trail of chocolate throughout the house. Do you know what the first thing is Amy did when she saw him? She actually took the time to take a photo of him. I love remembering back and looking at that moment and seeing this picture of Jake at that age, just looking ridiculous. It's priceless. But I love that Amy was able to kind of take a step back in that moment where she could have felt completely overwhelmed, been very frustrated and just I'm just exhausted, right, for the facing this mess that's going to take quite some time to clean up. And she took a photo because she knew someday this would be funny when we look back on it. What tends to happen when we're exhausted is we get very focused. Our vision narrows. And it's almost a survival thing, right? That's a good thing that we focus on the immediate and what needs to get done. But what we miss out on is the big picture. But parenting is about the long game. In the middle of it, it may feel like you're not making a lot of progress, but when you look back on your kids and, and how they've grown, it's amazing to, to see how much they change and how much they learn. So it might be hard, but one of the best things you can do is to think big picture. The second thing is to help your kids write their story. Your kid's story is a working draft, not a finished work. It's, it's being written. 
And that's where you come in. You can come alongside them and, and help them write their story. It's very easy for us as a parent when uh, our kids make a mistake or they do something wrong, they make a bad choice, for us to, to kind of give that choice a label and then even project that out. Our ability to project out the future of our child is impressive. And so maybe your, maybe your kid, your child misses a few homework assignments. All of a sudden, it's easy for us to give them this label of lazy or not a hard worker. And then we project that forward and we see them not going on to college because they can't keep their grades up. And then they never get a good job and then they end up living at home in their basement. So one missing assignment leads to them living at home for the rest of their life. As parents, we just have this natural ability to think so far forward and we put a lot of pressure on them in the moment for that. But here's the thing, when our kids mess up, that's not evidence of bad character, that's evidence of them learning character. So when they make a mistake, that's an opportunity for you to come alongside and help them write their story, help them uh, develop into the person they're becoming. And so what's true about that is honestly the more challenging situations that they face, those are all opportunities for them to grow. And so I'd almost say that if your child is not, not pushing back, not, not making mistakes, not uh, facing challenging moments, that there's probably very little growth happening there. And so we can see those moments as a good thing and a moment for us as parents to come alongside them and help them learn and develop character from those things. So, so mistakes aren't, an, aren't evidence of bad character. That's evidence of them learning character and growing their character in those moments. Now, I'm always a big fan of practical things that I can do as a parent. So I wanna give you a couple takeaways that you can do. And one thing that was really helpful for our family was coming up with five family values. And honestly, we just chose five because we figured we could count them on one hand and that was easier for our kids. So early on in our marriage, when uh, our older two were little, Amy and I came up with five family values, things that we thought were really important when we parent. And so we've got purpose, courage, family, giving, and fun. And so those are things that we really valued. We wanted to use those as teaching opportunities as our kids grew up, as they faced tough moments, and, and just to give us direction as parents. And that helped shape a lot of the decisions that we made as a family. And so at bedtime, we would just I would just ask the kids, hey, what's our five family values? And so at bedtime, we would uh, just kind of go through these with our kids and we would have them you know, go through on each finger, purpose, courage, family, giving fun. And when I would get to fun, I would just kind of jab my thumb into their side and tickle them. And, and they loved it and they remember those. Hannah, who's 18 years old, remembers those family values to this day. And Leah is now learning those and she understands what they are. So five family values, I'd encourage you to do that. That helps give direction. And then the second thing is just, uh, I use this in a lot of situations where it's challenging, is simply change your have to to get to. Instead of, I have to take my kids to school in the morning, I get to take my kids to school. I have to make lunches for my kids. I get to make lunches for my kids. And there's a lot of things that it's easy to focus on the negative, but when you step back and take a look, you're, you're really blessed. And changing your have to to a get to is a way just to kind of shift things more towards gratitude. And that's really helpful when you're exhausted. I have to make dinner tonight for my kids. That's exhausting. You know what? I get to make dinner for my family and we sit around the table. like. How thankful am I that I, I have a healthy family? So change those have to's to get to's. And then finally, I, I just wanna end with a quote from Andy Stanley, and, and I love this quote. Your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God may not be something you do, but someone you raise. Have an adventurous week.